hello so welcome to the another class of internet of things so in this class of iot today we will discuss about the security in iot now as we know that security is a prime concern when we are exchanging a, a lot of valuable information now if we just talk about our cellular networks here like your gsm or your mts or your 4g uh, networks there so it provides a secure environment then that means the device is also authenticated and then the user is also authenticated that yes whether it is a valid user it's a valid device and then moreover the data which is being exchanged between the two links that is also being secured with the techniques like your encryption or your cryptographic techniques here so that means similarly here in the internet of things that means we are connected to the internet so there are many chances that your device can be attacked by some hostile attackers that means by eavesdropper here or your device or the various packets which are being exchanged between the big cloud and the devices so that could be attacked there could be some malicious activities in the network so that means we have to secure this internet of everything's network also so if you just have a look here on the iot system so we start from the iot devices here now we know that these devices or this platform here provides this has to be a wireless embedded internet now we know that there are certain sensors and actuators so we have here embedded devices which has the sensing capabilities here embedded with your like your amr or your code vision avr systems now this is the first part here now after that these devices are connected to the next level to the gateways with the help of certain technologies like your ipv6 over low powered personal area network we are using here the ieee 802.15.4 which is your zigbee network then the bluetooth or low bluetooth energy or your wifi systems for your local area network so when data is exchanged between these devices that means we have to secure these interfaces also here now after that we have the connectivity to our wireless wide area networks also like your 3g or your 4g systems here now certain protocols which are used like your tcp ip or your udp and other constrained protocols are used here so these platforms enable the transfer of this data to your data centers so next big thing in this picture that we have is your data centers now these are exchanging information like going from one interface to another and then to the third interface over here now after that we have the consumer interface here also now these consumer interface here includes the devices like your cellular phones your wearable devices or your ipads or your tablets etc now when this information is your exchange between these two interfaces so we have the platform like your java or your javascript or your html so we have here java scripts html and such kind of protocols here so that means we have here different devices different platforms and different protocols on the basis of which the information here is being exchanged in the internet of everything so we can say that 
IoT security is little hard. Why it is hard? Because the system here is a complex system. Because it's a distributed system here. Many of the resources are distributed here. Starting from your sensors to your data centers and to your consumer part. It's a complete distributed system. Now after that, different execution languages are used at every interface. Different operating systems and there are different networks like your personal area networks and your uh, local area networks like your Wi-Fi and then your wide area networks like your 4G LTE or, or your UMTS systems here. And each of these have specialized hardware here. So this is here. The IoT security is complex because It is an distributed system, first of all. Then we have many execution languages, many operating systems here. Then you have specialized hardware now above all this we have to secure this environment here because a lot of valuable information is being exchanged here that includes your personal informations and location or presence related information so that means security here is just not an add-on but this is an integral part of the system here so what are the goals of security in your internet of things here the goals of security in IoT. So we need to secure the data and the system. So that means we have here the data security and the system security. The data security and your system security here. Now if I talk about the data security that means the real time data which I am collecting here from the embedded uh, systems I have to secure that data. I have to encrypt the data because it will be going here through different number of interfaces. So data security means you have to secure the real time data which is collected here from the various embedded systems. So this goal of data security here includes the research and defining the new computational models for securing the data analytics for securing the data analytics which is collected here from various embedded sources so data security after that we have the system security now the various devices the various interface and the various protocols make it as a complete iot system here so that means you have to provide here a secure framework for the hardware as well as the software part also so that it's easy to build a secure IoT system here. So that means the security here for IoT must be addressed from the device to the end part that means to the complete life cycle of the system the security should be implemented that from uh, what we mean to say is that we have to implement the security here from the initial phase to the operational stages to the operational environment of the system here. So what it includes will have for the security and what are the different stages in which you need to implement the security. So first of all we have Secure booting. 
Now, secure uh, booting here refers that when the first time the device is powered on. That means when your device is turned on. So that means when power is firstly introduced to the device, the authenticity and the integrity of the software which is running or which will run on that device that must be verified. So that means the first time when we are uh, opening our system, that means we turn it on, that means power is supplied so it will work now. So there will be different operating systems or various softwares which will be running there on my device. So secure booting means that when I am turning on my device, I have to check the authenticity and the integrity of the software on the device. How? I have to verify that by using the digital signatures. Secure booting here is done using the digital signature. Now, these digital signatures are here generated by a cryptographic techniques. That means it is generated here cryptographically. So you have to verify that particular software which is to be used on the system here. Now for example a person signs on a check. So he signs. So that is authentic and integrated because that person is signing on the check is the sign of that individual person. So that makes it an integral uh, parameter and when that is integral, it will provide the authentication that yes, it has been signed by the right person. So similarly, what we have, we have a digital signature which is attached here to the image of the software. So that means when it is authorized, when the digital signature is authorized, so that software is right to be operated on the system. That means it will or it is allowed to run on that particular device when it is loaded. So as soon as it is loaded, the digital signature which is attached here with the image of the software that is verified that it's the uh, authorized software which we can use on our system. So this is the first stage in which we are performing the secure booting. That is we have to authenticate and verify the software which will be running on my device. Now after secure booting, here because I will be using different kind of smart devices like my uh, certain variable devices so I will have to authenticate that whatever small software I'm using that is a verified software so this kind of of security measures like your secure booting it can prevent uh, certain malicious activities on your system now after secure booting the next one which I have is the access control next is your access control now access means that we are accessing our systems we are authorized to use that but above that if someone else is trying to use my system there should be in control for the access parameters that everyone should not be able to access each of the content of my system so after you secure booting access controls are applied that means there are certain components and the applications which need to work so a particular component or a particular application they can access only those resources which are applicable to perform their job now for example if i have here a certain application one and in my system i have a pool of resources like this so now if this application only requires this a which is my sensor data so that means this resource is required by this application and its work will be done so that means this particular application should be only able to access this resource it should not be or its access should be limited only to this particular resource and all this should be banned we can say it should not be able to access this resource so how this makes a system secure now for example if your system is here uh, 
has been attacked so access control here ensures that the intruder the one who has attacked the system it has minimum access to the other parts of the system so access control here is used so that we can preserve the resources of the system access should be denied to the intruders here or if they have attacked so it should be only to limited resources now after your access control, the next one is your device authentication. In our secure booting, we have uh, authenticated the software in access control. The access of the system should be limited only according to the requirements. Third one is my device authentication. Now, as in our cellular system, our mobile phones are also authenticated that whether mm, that particular user can access a network or not, whether it is blocked or some of the services are denied. So similarly here in our IoT, whatever kind of device you are using, it must be uh, authenticated before it starts transmitting or receiving in a system. So whenever a device is plugged into the network, that means whenever it joins the network, we have here a network of different things. So whenever a new device joins the network, it should authenticate itself before it is transmitting or receiving any kind of data. Now we have in our networks, the user authentication. So that user authentications allow a user to access the resources of the network. So that users basically access the network when it uh, enters certain credentials like user and password. When we have to access uh, Wi-Fi systems, so we have to enter there the username and the password. So that means the user is authentic and he can access that particular network. So similarly in this system where we have different number of machines, we have a network of machine, one particular machine when it is plugged into a network, it need to authenticate itself. So that means it has certain credentials. When it will be entering those credentials, so it will be authenticated and only after that it will be able to do the further processing that is able to transmit and receive the data. So this is your device authentication. That means every device need to authenticate itself before starting transmission and reception of your data. After device authentication, the next step is firewall and IPS. IPS refers to your intrusion prevention system. Intrusion prevention system. Now we have firewalls in our networks and in our computers also which allows or which we can say that that uh, denies uh, the it denies those packets which are malicious that means which could damage our data. So firewall what happens only uh, transfers the secure data packets and the one which are malicious data packets, they are blocked by the firewall. They are not allowed to uh, enter in your system. So that means here also the devices in your internet of things also requires a firewall systems. That means we need a system which could inspect that what kind of data is coming to this device. That means the inspection of the various packets which are destined towards particular device. Now if it is my device, so that means it should have here an internal firewall system which will prevent the malicious packets because it could damage your system or it could hack your systems. Now here in uh, IoT systems we require basically host based your firewalls and uh, intrusion prevention systems. Why? Because there are a number of embedded devices and each of the embedded device will have certain unique protocols. So that's why we don't need here such device dependent but a particular uh, host based systems for different enterprises which can manage this packet inspection. So for example, we have an IoT application like your smart grid. So in smart grid, you will be having different number of devices. So it will have its own protocol which will go on that how many devices are there in system and how each of the device will talk to another system. So this is 
this device limited protocols now what about your specific protocols which are your industry protocols so they will uh, apply their filtering of certain packets and inspection of those packets because they may contain malicious activities it could be a malicious payload so that means we need host based firewalls which could and detect these packets between the IT protocols and the non-IT protocols. For my industry uh, specific protocols, they will be my IT protocols. But my certain applications like my smart grid, it will not having an IT protocol. So that's why we need here host paid protocols which can detect any malicious payload. After firewall and IPS, next one is your updates and patches. updates and patches so what about the updates and patches so once the device is in operation that means when it is in full operation mode it's working in the system it will receive certain uh, hot patches and software updates so what we have to do is there the device you needs to authenticate that whether it it is correct update or whether it's an improper or impaired function for the safety of the devices so these are required here but these must also be verified that how much bandwidth it's consuming or it should not be an uh, impure functional system so it could disturb or disturb the functioning of your existing system here so these are the various steps which we need here for implementing a secure internet of things environment starting from the secure booting so this here demonstrate the complete life cycle for your system that when you are having a device you are turning it on so from this stage your security process begins here it means from the booting and then your access control for your systems then the authentication of the various devices which are plugged into the network then the firewall systems and the ips systems here for preventing the malicious payloads and then the updates and the patches that means when your network here is in full operational swing these security events or security related activities are going on so this is about your iot security so your security cannot be just uh, thought as an uh, add-on to the device but rather it's an integral part of the system integral part of the devices for the reliable functioning of your complete network here so this is all about the security of uh, internet of things thank you so much